Hello everyone, welcome to Shibuya, an iconic center of Japanese youth culture and a popular place for shopping and nightlife here in Tokyo. I am right across from Shibuya Station at the famous Shibuya Crossing,、uh, which is often referred to as the world's busiest pedestrian crossing, with thousands of people passing through here on a daily basis. A lot of people tend to go up to Starbucks to try and get a seat by the window to view the crossing from above. But I can suggest a better place, which is absolutely free and easy to get to. All you need to do is to just take a short walk from Shibuya Crossing to Shibuya Mark City, which is located on the west side of Shibuya Station. A good place to view the Shibuya Crossing is to go to the second level of Shibuya Mark City. On the second floor here is a concourse leading to Shibuya Station, with a great window view of the crossing. Although there is a mesh on the window, a phone or action camera lens should be small enough to shoot through the holes in the mesh to allow you a clear view. Shibuya Crossing is a scramble intersection where the traffic signals briefly stop all traffic to allow pedestrians to cross in all directions, including diagonally. It's quite a sight to see, and crossing this intersection has become one of the items on the must-do list when visiting Tokyo. We'll hang around here a little longer, and then we'll say hello to another iconic landmark in this area next. This is the famous Hachiko statue in Shibuya. According to a popular story, a dog named Hachiko tragically waited in front of the station every day for its deceased master. He became a folk hero and an important symbol of loyalty in Tokyo. There's even a Hollywood film about him starring Richard Gere. But be warned, it's a bit of a tearjerker of a movie. Another cool place to check out here is the Tokyo Depachika, just next to the station. Depa means department store, and chika means basement. So at the basement level here, they sell a wide variety of food. This is the closest you'll get to foodie heaven. I see fish roe, shrimp, white bait, octopus. This prawn tempura bento box looks so nice. And so many different types of sashimi. Whoa, it's unagi or Japanese grilled eel, and lots of different types of grilled fish over here. So many varieties of large prawns, and there's crab here also. It looks like king crab, snow crab, and hairy crab over there as well. These Japanese confectionery looks so beautiful and so colorful. These are sando, which are Japanese sandwiches. Look at all the fresh salad and all these yummy-looking bento boxes. Yep, these prices are real. Did you know that fruit is a luxury item often given as gifts in Japan? These fruits are the cream of the crop. They are grown under very strict conditions, flawlessly perfect in every way, and immaculately packaged and presented. A few moments later, I'm here at Shinjuku Station. It's regarded as one of the busiest stations in the world. I'm heading towards the east exit, where the main shopping and entertainment area is located. On this side, you'll find all the neon lights, crowds, restaurants, and bars that you'd associate with modern Tokyo. Located on the west side are some of Tokyo's tallest buildings, including the Tokyo Metropolitan Building and a very unique cocoon tower. I'm making my way to Toho Cinemas here in Shinjuku. It's a pretty famous cinema here in Tokyo, and I'll show you why in a moment.、Um, I'm going there to watch. Avengers Endgame today because I haven't seen it yet. Hey, I found a mum and pop fruit stand over here. The fruits are cheaper compared to where I was earlier in Shibuya, but it's still quite expensive compared to prices outside of Japan. This street is Yasukuni Dori. It's well known for its neon lights and starts off around this area known as Kabukicho, which is one of Tokyo's colorful nightlife districts. There's a popular Don Quixote store here on the right, and just up a bit further will be our destination. So 
This is the Toho building here in Kabukicho and it's famous for the life-size Godzilla head looking out from on top of the building. So I'm just walking around Kabukicho at the moment. Last time I was in Japan. This is where I stayed when I was in Tokyo. It's a pretty interesting place. It gets very lively at night. It's actually the red light district of Tokyo. Um, but overall it's pretty harmless. I wanted to show you this place which I previously visited on my first time to Tokyo. This is the robot restaurant. And if you're looking for an interesting experience, I would recommend catching a show here. They have a glittering bar inside that looks like it was made out of glass and crystal. And it combines robots, dragons, ninjas, amazing dancers, drums, and a whole lot of neon lights and really loud music. Japanese subculture at its best. I'm back here again with Godzilla going into the Toho building cinemas now to catch a movie. Toho cinemas is one of the bigger movie theater chains in Japan. There's quite a big crowd in here tonight probably because of the Golden Week holiday. Let's go look for the ticket vending machine. I've got my ticket. The movie starts at 7.30 p.m. I'm a big fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so I'm really excited for this. Avengers, assemble! They've got a pretty decent merchandising store here. They have Superman and Spider-Man 2099 collectible sculptures on display. More figures, comic books, pens, Hearings, coasters, those look like Funko Pop figures over there. It's almost time for the movie, so I'm going to go get myself some snacks beforehand. This hot dog lacks a little in presentation, but it smells good. The popcorn and drink came with this special tray, which I guess will hook onto my seat inside the movie theater. I'm in. The movie is about to begin. Bye Godzilla. I absolutely loved the movie and the experience. See you next time around, hopefully. It's getting quite late, so I'm heading back to Asakusa now and thinking of grabbing some food at the Hidakaya restaurant near my hotel. I'm back at Hidakaya, which is the popular budget restaurant that I went to previously. It's already half past midnight, but this place is still open. Tonight, I'm going to try this ramen dish and I'll also order a serving of karaage, which is Japanese style fried chicken. The karaage has arrived and it's served with some shredded lettuce and QP mayonnaise. Mmm, that's great fried chicken. This is gomaku ramen or starchy sauce ramen. The broth is really quite rich and thick and you can see a mixture of noodles, vegetables, meat, seafood and quail eggs in there. Mm. It actually has a pretty seafood flavor. And it's Fairly sweet and salty broth. Tastes kinda like oyster sauce.